I literally fell on my knees in that nasty floor and I just begged God to do something. I, you know, I, didn't, I don't care what it takes, do whatever it takes. I, I can't live like this. Either kill me or change me. I started, you know, kind of just using drugs every now and then about age 15. But um, I was a functional addict, and so it didn't catch up with me for a long time. Um, I actually, I worked at the Auckland County Sheriff's Department as a dispatcher for a few years, and then I decided that I was gonna make a career change and go into nursing. And so, you know, I was already just kind of using here and there, you know, party along the way, whatever, try to stay awake. And so eventually meth became my drug of choice. When I was probably, 27 years old maybe. My grandma died and that was my comforter and I went absolutely crazy. I uh, didn't know where to go so I just lived wherever. And so I done drugs you know to cope with everything and The first time was really hard because they put you out with $25 and that's it. It's up to you to find your way to go or how you gonna get how you gonna get home. I didn't have a license yeah. because they were no good no more. And so I didn't have a way to go get license because I can't drive myself because I don't have a car. And, you and have it was to have an just and it was just uh it was a mess. You can't do nothing because you can't do nothing. If there's somebody that's not off work, how are you gonna go anywhere? You know, if your grandparents are gone, and how are you gonna do anything? And then you gotta pay them in three weeks. So, I mean, it was, it was a really big struggle. The second time that I was going home, uh, my wife picked me up and it was way different than the first time. When I got home, her mother gave me a car, gave me a place to live. Uh, they helped me with my probation until I got a job. I mean, it was just, if I'd have had that the first time, I don't think I'd have went back. You have to have somebody and the people, I know people get scared. He just got out of prison. There's no telling what he went for. And I understand people are, are scared, but most people in prison are like us, me and you. They just made some bad choices. And up on those bad choices, if you've been given a lot of time to think about it by yourself, depending on how you make it out. When I got my record expunged, it was, um, it was just, it was an open door that nobody could shut. You know, um, I knew what the Lord wanted me to do, and now I knew I could do it. I, I don't have to check that box anymore. That's really, you know, that's really what this, the second chance is the least that you could do. I. <laughs> In that bathroom floor, I was pretty well convinced that I would never be anything anymore. When we lose hope, we lose a lot. Yeah, you know, I, we were talking on the way down here, uh, the difference between the facts and the truth. You know, I, I, tell, my, I tell the girls that I uh, counsel all the time, I tell them, you know, the facts will take you back to the dope house but the truth will keep you from going there. Because, you know, it was a fact. I threw my kids away. I ran around on my husband. It was a fact. It is a fact, I did that. But the truth is, I'm not that girl anymore. Second chances are necessary. And I would say giving people second chances is probably scary. 
But what if we didn't, what if you never went to prison and you messed up and never got a second chance?